Ladies and gentlemen, in this video, we're going to paint up two Titans. No, it's not clickbait. I'm actually going to paint up two 28mm scale Titans. Not Adeptus Titanicus, not any kind of thing. Two Titans. Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Elsonation. Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Titans. I've been using these two as clickbait thumbnails for a little while, but now it's time for them to get a paint job. This is Timmy. This is Jimmy. Now, why do I have to get them painted? One, because it's on my to-do list, and two, because I'm going to Valfest, which is on the 21st of January. It's now currently Christmas Eve, which means I've got just under a month to get these two done, and I'm going to be bringing these Titans to a game there so that's the motive for the video yeah I don't really need much more than that now I'm gonna try and get them painted up in the Legio our storm colors which is one of the more adventurous Titan colors but let's see what we can do let's see how it works with painting miniatures or bigatures in this case and see what happens So when we're dealing with Titans, they are relatively colourful machines, however they are machines as well. So we have effectively two elements to them, the mechanical element, which is going to be our steels and our metals, and then the colourful panels. So what we want to do is use our sub-assembly practice. Now when working with Titans, it's basically one panic inducing step after another. You just tackle one problem, have a massive panic attack, figure out how to do it, and then get past it. My first part was to actually strip off all the panels off the Titans, apart from this one panel on Jimmy's crotch which I just kept on yanking on until it didn't come off so I wasn't able to pull off Jimmy's crotch. Uh, phrasing? Now with these Titans, I'm not going to paint the people inside the cockpit because to be honest with you, I kind of want to glue them down. So I'm going to leave that task for another day. Timmy doesn't have the pilots in his, so that's easy enough, but Jimmy's got his glued in, so we're going to have to deal with that. Luckily enough, Timmy had his arms magnetized, so I can pull off his arms. Jimmy, however, he is glued shut, so there's really not a lot I can do, so we're going to have to just work around that, which is quite annoying to be honest with you. So the initial step, I wanted to get the base metal colours down and I thought airbrushing would be the way forward. My initial thought was actually to use a rattle can, but there isn't a rattle can color of dark metal yet. So Colorforge, here's my suggestion to you, dark metal, black metal, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. So I coated it all with Vallejo Premium Metallic Black. Then, because I wanted some texture to this metal, because these are relatively large objects, I wanted to actually get some texture in there and I thought airbrushing on would just be a little bit too smooth. So I decided because I'm actually insane, I was going to dry brush and stipple on. Stippling seemed like one of the best options because it actually started giving me texture to the metal. It wasn't just a flat, smooth coat. We got the scratch marks in there. It looks like this was brushed metal. Then I used Vallejo metal color aluminium, aluminium, aluminum to you Americans, and we dry brush this on. However, this is a lot thinner, so when you're dry brushing with this, you're gonna have to wipe off a lot more because it's relatively runny. Don't worry too much yourselves about like putting on too much we are going to weather these down further we've got a nice coat of metal all over our titan's body that's step one done that didn't take as long as i thought it was going to Now's the interesting part, I decided to wash them. I decided I wanted to use some of the AK Interactive products, however, I used engine oil, then I realized I didn't really need to use much else, so I decided to just swap it out with a black oil wash mixed with some of the AK Interactive engine oil here and there, and just coat the entire model. Then we're on to the Titan's panels. If any of you have seen my previous video on painting the Adeptus Titanicus Legio Astorum Titan, that's one I'm gonna replicate here, but much bigger size. So I decided to get some of the panels prime blue, and unfortunately Jimmy's previous paint job, which was very nice, I completely covered over with blue as well. And the other panels I wanted to be yellow, I primed them all white first.
Then I just used Vallejo Premium Yellow to get that on. The blue was done with Vallejo Premium Dark Blue and then we highlighted up with Cobalt Blue. When I was doing the highlights I mainly aimed for the centers, I left the edges dark to give us a bit of an effect. The trim will hopefully bring out the edging of that. There's going to be a lot of edging in this video. Crazy. Now, I recently watched Midwinter Mini's video on how to weather Titan panels, and I thought, you know what, I'll give this a try. And I have mixed effects. So I decided orange would be the correct color to use with yellow. And it kind of works. It's a bit odd. You kind of have to get used to it. With the blues, I did a almost sky blue with it. And what I would say, if you're going to be doing this, use a filter color afterwards. The effect is initially quite weird. It can be a little bit jarring. As long as you use a filter color over the top again afterwards to blend it back down, it's all right. It's actually all right. Now I'm going to be drawing some weird octopus shape here to do my fire effects. Now if anyone saw, again, the Adeptus Titanicus video before, this is how we're going to get our flame effect, by drawing a little squid monster on a piece of plastic card and then cutting it out. Then effectively what we do is a three step process. I say it's a three step, it's three colors. And they work like this. You start off by putting a coat of white or light gray down in the various sections using a little squid pattern to create some kind of flame effects. Just use the end of them or the inside of it to get our weird flame effects. Then we coat it in a semi-translucent red. I say semi-translucent, we don't want fully opaque because you still want to be able to see those flame effects. After that, we come back in with our little squid monster again and either reinforce them or add some new areas with again with the white or light gray. Then we coat the same thing again with orange. Again, semi-translucent orange. Do multiple coats though if you need to, so just reinforce the vibrancy of it. Then we do our last step and we do the same thing again. This time, after we've done all our white and grays, we're then gonna add in yellows. What I would suggest as well is when you're doing the yellows and the oranges, work your way up slightly higher. Leave the reds at the lower end and progressively work your way up to the higher. This was one of the longest points in the entire process, to be honest with you. After we've done that, we'll get a gloss varnish to lock it all in and that becomes our save point. Then I'm gonna use a bit of a filter over the yellow because I wanted to blend in those weird stain marks. Still got mixed opinion, they do add texture to it, so I'll give them that. And then we're also gonna do a filter with the blue as well to just bring that down slightly. I wanted a more royal navy blue on it. And then we do a gloss varnish over all of that and that locks in our save point. Believe it or not, I do actually do tutorials these days. I just try to add in stupid as well, so it makes it a little bit more entertaining. With stupid phrases like, in this video, I tackle two big boys. <laughs> Phrasing. Now for the wondrous point in the video where we have to do the trim. This is the worst point of all time known as painting process. The initial colors and the base panels go down absolutely fine. They go down relatively quick. Then you have to do all the trim and there's lots of it. Just like your Space Marines, they've got trim as well. Now I realized just before I was about to do the trim that I hadn't completely finished with all the panels. Yellow and blue and flames were one thing, but these come from the Abdectus Titanicus, or the Mechanicum, depending on where you're from or what time frame, and I wanted to give them a bit more variety, so I wanted to get some hazard stripes down. If you saw my previous video on how to do Big Warhammer, there's some advice on that on how to do masking and how to get good hazard stripes, so go check that out if you want to know a little bit more. So we started with a black, then went up to a dark warm grey, then went up to a bright cold grey. But the bright cold grey was just in very small areas, so it just gives off that little hint of a reflection of light. And then for the most soothing part, the most soothing part, removing the masking tape. However, I know better than this. This is actually one of the most scariest points because sometimes the paint comes up. But this time, I did good. It didn't come up. On to the trim. And here's my technique for dirty gold. Yes, believe it or not, I am actually doing a bit of a tutorial here. So what we did here is mix dark brown with gold. 
gives us this kind of copperish color. I suppose you could just use copper instead, but then we paint all the trim. This took about two days. It sucked. It really did suck. But once it was done, ooh, it was interesting. When I saw this, I thought, yes, it's coming together. I'm almost done. I'm almost there. And then I realized I needed to highlight the trim. Now to do this, we're going to do precision dry brushing, which I've coined the phrase edging. So yes, we're going to edge these two big boys. Hey, phrasing. So we start off with the gold and we edge all around the trim with a gold. Then we come in with thrash metal, which is a kind of off silver, and we're gonna edge the rest of this Titan. I had to be really careful when edging the backside of Jimmy because I really didn't want to make a mess. So just be careful. You don't want to make a mess when you're edging. Okay, it can be it can be torturous. Just be patient. Edging is worth it. Phrasing, boom! After that, I made a concoction of oil washes, which involved browns, blacks grease colors and stuff like that. I coated all of the trim in this. This actually helps the separation between the trim and the armor panels and gives us a little bit more definition as well. And also adds an element of weathering as well. Again, quite a grind, but it's worth it. Trust me, it really is worth it. Now, after my room was stinking of oil products and this white spirits, I thought it's best to leave this for a little while. So I decided to evacuate the room and go have my Christmas break. And this is the point which got me thinking of why did I think this was going to be such a hard ordeal? Basically, the hardest point was starting this. And if anything I can put out from this video, apart from the painting advice, is just start your projects and see where they take you. Once you get started, might as well keep on going. for the wonderful part which is cleaning off all the oil paint so we're going to use some makeup sponges here dipped in white spirit and we're just going to remove the bulk of all the oil wash just to clean it up but it should leave all the recess areas with a bit of a shade which is a nice effect and adds an element of our weathering again bit of a grind however I say it's a bit of a grind. There's only two of these models. So it seems like it's a grind. It's actually a little bit easier than it looks. Also decided to use some of the dirty brushes that are soaking up a bit of the oil to see if I could create some exhaust effects on the Titan. And it was just a bit of playing around with adding, removing, and it kind of worked. Then we went into adding all the details on the carapace. To be honest with you, this is just painting parchments. I put the colors up there so you know which ones are which, but however you do parchments, that's how I did it here. After cleaning all of that up and getting all the carapace parchment done, it really did feel like I was getting close to the end of this. So it was just time to add in a couple of extra details, the shields and any other little bits and bobs, including cabling, adding a wash onto the cabling as well, any of the other panels which needed a highlight, so like the greys and the whites. And then for the wondrous thing, which I didn't film, was adding all the decals but to be honest with you, if you wanted to see how to do decals, check out the video in the top right corner and there's a quick little guide there on how to do decals properly. After all the decals were down, I was in a mode of euphoria because I was thinking these Titans are pretty much done. All I needed to do was a little bit of the weapons effects. All we're going to do here was Vallejo Premium Cobalt Blue as a base, then Pro Acryl Sky Blue as the highlight towards the center and then Baharoth Blue towards the center of that 
through an airbrush, and that's how we got the glow effects on the Titan's blaster. Then from one of the minigun barrels, I decided to make it look like it was heating up, so I put a red effect on it. This was just done by using an airbrush, creating a red, and then highlighting it up with an orange. Then I needed to attach all the panels, so with these, I decided to use my wow stick, put these in place. Yes, I use the term wild stick because that's what it's called, but I love the name. It is funny though, right? Phrasing. But everything got glued down and then everything got a matte varnish to seal it in place. And with all that done, it's time for a grand reveal. The problem with grand reveals is Titans are far too big for backdrops. <laughs> it's a little bit bodge job. Also as well, check out this fleece poncho I got for Christmas. It's the most amazing thing. I'm like a fluffy Emperor Palpatine right now. Do it. Anyway, it's time for a showcase. Here's the big boys. So it's New Year's Day, I actually got these Titans finished within a week, well, six days, and I even took two days off, so that could be done in a working week. It's kind of a strange thing, it's actually only two models, and if you've got an airbrush, Titans get done pretty quickly. Again, a message to anyone that's thinking or is intimidated by Titans, really don't be. They're easier than you think, they're like miniatures, but big so you can do a lot more work with them. Now there's elements of them that I haven't fully finished and I might get around to it, I might put a bit more weathering and dings and dents in them and stuff like that. But for now, I'm happy with them. They've got a paint job and part of Operation Fab is on its way. The end of 2022 finishes with two giant instruments of destruction. I'm gonna move on to 2023 now because that's how time works. But for New Year's resolutions, I'm going to keep them to myself. I think you can all guess what I'm going to try and do. I mean, I've created a thing, Operation Fap, so you kind of get the idea. But I've got my own goals, and they're personal to me, so I'll leave you a mystery of those. Anyway, for now, I'm going from arm mode to turtle mode, where I have no arms. And yes, this fluffy poncho is the best thing ever. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Elsa Nation. Thank you for tuning in and watching. I hope you have a wonderful 2023. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas or holiday period and whatever you did. And hopefully this year will bring you some joy. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Do it. 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 Okay, gotta go. Bye-bye.